Okay, so open workouts are done and there is a lot to take away from some things and some things we kind of already knew. But the biggest thing that I took away from Misfits number four open workout is from our main event. Tommy Face Temper is being slept on a little bit and KSI might be a little bit better than I thought. What do I mean? The breakdown. Let's go. Josh Bruckner and Salt Poppy. This one is, again, the one that just keeps bubbling up, and we all know it's going to be a great fight. It's probably the fight of the night. Like, it is the fight of the night. There's really no way the winner of this one doesn't get that astronomical opportunity. Like, KSI fight, main event, I, whatever it is, the winner should get it. And you watch both guys warming up. I mean, Josh Bruckner has calves on calves, has muscles on muscles. The guy is chiseled, son. And again, he was one of the harder workers in his open workout. He's really not hiding anything, which is pretty cool to me. Like, a lot of our guys are still new boxers. They don't want to show too much because every little bit counts when your other team is sitting there like this, just staring you down, waiting for you to do something that they can kind of cue in on. And, okay, this is what we're going to prepare for. This is what he wants to do. Josh didn't give a fuck. That dude went out there for, it looked like three or four rounds of actual boxing time and just was hitting those pads, cracking them. And you know how some guys, when they're holding pads, we talked about it on the channel where a coach will meet halfway and that sound, right? The coach was holding that pad and Josh was, and it was sounding like a gun was going off in the room. He's got big time power, man. And again, this fight is not gonna be just based around power, but what I, from what I could see about Josh, front foot, heavy on his jab, really trying to just see, can Poppy take one of these? We haven't seen him be hit. Can he take one of these shots? And again, saw some inside work from Josh too, and fair play. But I talked to Poppy about that open work. I said, what'd you think, man? He goes, well, it looks like they want to be on their front foot and be aggressive, but let's just say I let people see what I want them to see. So that's when I looked at Poppy's open workout. And again, he didn't show too much, but just very relaxed, very fluid. And the guy is a natural boxer, man. He just moves so, so well. And it's effortless. It really is. It's effortless for Poppy. And you think about how he can beat Josh. Yeah, you know, he's going to have to catch Josh coming in and maybe even try to front foot fight with Josh. Maybe we get a little firefight here. We haven't seen that from Poppy. We haven't really needed to see it because he's been able to do what he wants with everyone. But you want to talk about two guys trading in the fire where this much of a difference can make the entire fight change? Had some, like, I might have to have a cigarette and a smoke. I might have to have a drink after that one because if that happens, we get that fight. We're talking one of the greatest fights we've ever seen in the scene, period. And again, the winner take all. What Salt Poppy said sent chills down my spine. Josh, basically, I asked him about it. He said, listen, I'm going to hit this guy. He hasn't been hit. I'm going to put a jab on him. Not a little light touch. I'm going to put a jab on him that hurts him. And everything else behind it is coming with even more power. So someone is going to be a superstar. Someone's going to surprise us. That fight just give, is it, is it Saturday? Yet? Just give me the fight. Just, it's time, bro. Just give me that fight. That's the biggest one. Now, Slim and Tom Zanetti. This one was one I thought in my mind, okay, this is how this is going to go. Slim is going to have a little bit of a tough time early because Tom Zanetti is kind of Ryan Taylor-esque, really tough guy, hard to hit. But now my mind is kind of, I wouldn't say changing, but taking a different look at this because, yeah, Slim is going to be accurate. He's going to be active. He's going to be front foot. He's going to try to do all those things he's done to Temper, to everybody on, on Social KO, to Ryan Taylor. This is a different guy. This is a guy that can hurt Slim and doesn't seem like he's really inept to taking shots. He don't mind getting in there and taking a couple to throw a couple. And I'm watching him, and again, we're just on the pads today. A lot of arm punches here from Tom Zanetti. A lot of this, 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 but there's some speed there. And the one, two down the pipe looks nice. And I look over while Slim's watching it, and he's got one of these looks on. Like maybe this is gonna be a little harder than I thought it would be. And I'm not saying that Slim can't get it done because I still think he can. I still think there's a path to victory that's very opportunistic of Slim because Tom does hold his hands a little low, does throw from the hips a lot, is there and available to be punched. But what Slim can't do in this fight is trade. He cannot get in trading wars with Tom Zanetti and think he's going to win like he did versus Ryan Taylor, like he did versus Temper. Those guys can crack, sure. But Tom Zanetti's a little bit of both. Speed and accuracy, power and gumption. I'm gonna go do it. Who's gonna get to the shot first? Tom will play that game. And by the looks of it, he's got enough power to win it. 
So if Slim is going to trade with Tom Zanetti, we're on upset alert here, folks. I'm not joking, that can really happen. But if he doesn't and he boxes this thing away, go into the later rounds, we'll see what happens. But it's a dangerous fight. I've told you this from the beginning and now you're all seeing why. And our main event, this is what I wanted to get to because we were at this venue from 11 a.m. this morning. We left the venue at 6, 6 p.m. KSI showed up at 5.39 and was out the door by 5.55. There was not a lot shown from the main event on that side, but we're gonna get to it. Temper came in, and if you guys haven't heard this yet, I said it on Twitter, Malik Scott is now the full-time head coach of Face Temper. What does that mean, full-time? Just basically when Temper's fighting. He's not stopping coaching Deontay Wilder or any of those guys, but again, you heard that name I just said. That's Deontay Wilder's head coach. Also prolific, high-level boxer throughout his career as well. This is a guy that you want to talk about maintaining distance and control in a boxing fight. You want to talk about strategizing and being a genius when it comes to the coaching side. You go get Malik Scott. This is a massive get for temper. Only from what I can gather, been with him a couple of weeks, which is you'd like to see more, but we're already here. So you can't reverse time. Temper has him now. And I started to see a little bit of that in the open workout. Temper every single time, and this is super, super important, I want you guys to watch, they started simulating KSI's shoulder dip, right? His lead shoulder, where he pops in, comes down, he likes to change levels, bring his lead shoulder down, big time overhand over the top. You watched it time and time in the Pineda fight, in the Swarms fight. It's a shift in his hips, lead shoulder down, back shoulder over the top right hand. Every single time I watched him practice this in this open workout, you saw frame from Tommy, frame on the lead shoulder, frame keeping that distance, frame, frame, change angle, frame, change angle. They understand the danger that KSI presents if he gets inside, because Tommy is not a good inside fighter, not yet. He can become that, but on two weeks notice, that's not enough time. So you have to try to do everything in prevention mode and take advantage of the outside. KSI honestly looks like he wants to play a little bit of the outside game to get to the inside. So he was, like I said, we're gonna talk about what he was doing in a second, but. That is the biggest point I saw, because again, Temper didn't show a ton. He was, he was pat, you know, hitting the noodles a little bit, but it was more footwork and making sure we maintain distance. Pretty clear game plan for Tommy. I did see some hands higher, which you like to see. You didn't see him, again, wasn't being attacked, but you didn't see him pop up and the chin go straight up in the air and just bending at the hips. You saw the hands high, the chin down. You saw him throwing straight shots like a tall guy should down the pipe, boom, boom, right? So all that's good but I want to make sure of one big fact because of what KSI came in and showed in just a short amount of time, Tommy better be switched on. He better be ready to go when that first bell goes because if he comes in and is like, oh, let's just fill this out, first round, okay. KSI is gonna run through him like hot knife through butter. Like I'm watching this guy, KSI, just be fired up, ready to go. And it won't be because of the skill or, or the technique or any of that stuff. It'll just be because KSI is so ramped up to go and Tommy not being ready is the worst thing that can happen. But if Tommy switched on ready to go, sticks a jab in KSI's face early on, we might have a different fight here. And this is why I say Tommy may be underestimated just a bit here because we're talking about a 6'4 Southpaw. A guy that if, and it's a big if, but if he can handle that range and make KSI start to get back to that unorthodox and those big wide swings and over six rounds, Let's see what that gas tank looks like because we hear work rate, work rate, work rate, but it has to be an intelligent work rate from KSI. You can't just outwork everyone every single second of every single fight without great technique, without taking your time, without patience, pressure, and eventually finding a way past the looping shots, finding a way past the big jab. So if Tommy can make things a little difficult early on and settle KSI down a bit, he might have a, a closer fight, not only in the middle, but toward the end, Maybe we even anticipate it. But KSI showed me something in his open workout that may say something else as well. It's a simple game plan. But the urgency of KSI was what caught my eye because it it does look a bit rushed, just to me. It was like, man, what the hell? We just ah, going crazy. Like, where's the, the patience and the and the lead into it and the but again, it's an open workout. It's hard to take a lot from it. Also, it did look like sometimes KSI was getting himself caught in the air a lot, right? Like when you when you do a lot of these exchanges and you're changing angles, you don't wanna have both feet off the ground continuously at a time, right? One foot, one foot, one foot, one foot. But you see him bump, bump, and then chain both feet in the air, plant, throw, 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 right? Like it was almost like a movie. 
I'm like, man, you know, in those in those little in-betweens when you're off balance, you can really get caught with some stuff and, and it just throws your equilibrium off. Maybe you slip, fall down, whatever. Those are things you just want to watch out for. But again, I, I go back to it with KSI. Is it even going to matter? His mentality is so insane for a human being right now. He looks like a different animal. It's like he is just waiting, like they've got a, a, a leash on him. He's just trying to get off and he's, he's so close to just attacking. And that's the mentality I don't know if Temper's ready for. I don't know if he's ready for when that bell goes, how quickly KSI is going to jump on him and be all over him. Because like I said, KSI talks about work rate, work rate, work rate. He's going to bring it all 18 minutes in there. Like there won't be one rest period for KSI. He's that in shape, he's that ready. I do want to see this technique. He was, again, switching stances, you know, orthodox. How does he handle, again, he's seen bigger guys. How does he handle a little bit more of the range from temper? I don't, honestly, if he if he jumps on temper early, I don't even know if we get to the later part of the fight because of how quickly KSI can, can change a fight. And again, if you're temper, you know what's coming. Jab to the body, overhand. It's coming, we've seen it. It's devastating, and if you're not ready, in those first three minutes, KSI's gonna put it on you and he's gonna catch you right behind the ear, and you're gonna go, why am I in the hospital? What happened? Where, 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 like, where's the rest of the FaZe Clan? Are we playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2? Is it 2013? Like, it's gonna be that quick, but you gotta be ready. And I think Tommy is, but just a different level that KSI is bringing. It showed me a lot today, just in that little bit, just how quick and, and switched on he is. Again, a little rushed, maybe even a little, too much energy just slow it down relax a little bit but it's not the way ksi fights we know that if you're gonna fight in a, in a certain way which we know he is which is frantic sometimes and just crazy pressure why not practice the same way he did that today so ksi is dangerous very much so and, and again he's looking to make a statement with temper i saw it in the the, the post fight interview or the post fight interview i saw it in the uh post workout interview he was talking he goes i'm gonna catch a body so you can tell what his intentions are temper Got to be ready, but if he is, they can keep him at range. This could be more competitive than we think. But what happens? We're only a couple days away. Press conference tomorrow. There's a lot to get to. I don't have the answers yet, guys. But Saturday, January 14th, live on the zone. Guess we'll find out.